Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 36. Today we tackle spreadsheet formulas part 3 with VLOOKUPs, RANGES, and the CONCATENATE function. As the title suggests, this is the third video in our spreadsheet formula series and the last I'm going to do for a bit, since I want to share other types of things with you. Hopefully you'll forgive me for being on a spreadsheet roll, but it's honestly something I love and something I think people have an unnecessary anxiety about. I should also note that next week I'll be on Thanksgiving vacation, so we will miss a video. Okay, let's get right into it. What in the world is concatenate? Well, it's a complex word for a very simple function. It joins one or more field values into one field. So take the example you see here. Let's say that I wanted to combine these and just combine the first and last names of these people. I could use the concatenate function to do this. So I'll start by typing equals concatenate and you don't even have to spell it, just C-O-N-C -C, and you can select that. And then you put the first string and the second string and so on. So I could say A1 comma B2 and close out. Now there's an error here and you're going to see this happen. The problem you see here is that there's no space in between these two field names. So I have to actually add that. So I can come in here and say uh, A2 and quotation mark space as a second string to do. And the reason why you put in quotation marks is because it is a value, an alpha value. So it's a, it's, it's a space or a letter or something like that. It's not a number. And then B2. So then there's a space now, turn her loose. And so if I wanted to do other things with that, I could continue to do this. I could go comma, quotation mark, comma, and then C2. Now what this would do is put in a comma in between these things. In fact, comma space, comma. There you go. So you see my formula is now concatenate A2, comma, a space in quotation marks so that there's a, a space character there comma, the field of B2, comma, a comma and space in quotation marks so that it puts that in, in there, in between the title and all, then another comma to separate another value, and then finally C2. Now there is another way to do this. You can actually come in here and say, I, not use the concatenate formula, and just use the ampersand, the and symbol, to combine certain things. So you can do it this way as well. You could say equals A3 and space in quotation marks and b3 and comma space and job title c3 and that will do roughly the same thing only it does it without a function it's using a formula that i've typed in so the next thing i wanted to show you was vlookup vertical lookup so sometimes, well, and, and validation. So sometimes you want to be able to type in something and have a value associated with that first value show up. So in this case, if I typed in John Doe, I want the email address to automatically fill in. Now you can do this with a lot of different things. You can go in here and say years experience and you want that to kind of populate as well. Now there's a couple ways you can do this to have the user select a value from a list. You can do this using the validation and then you can choose what type of validation you want to use. So you go to data and data validation on the field that you would like for them to have a choice on. And when you go to validation, you can say, okay, I want to choose from a, a, a list from a range of cells, which is the easiest one, but then you have to have these values somewhere, or you can even tell it to choose a list of items. Now, if you don't want to use a VLOOKUP, if you just want people to have a pull down list of menu of choices for things, such as uh, whether you know there are three types of something and you, you just want them to show that, and you don't want anything to happen based on that, you just want to have that, then it's easy just to type the list in here. So I could type in, uh, John Doe, comma, Jane Doe, comma, Daffy Duck, right? And save, and there'll be a pull down list for them to choose. Pretty easy. But if you want something to happen based on that, it's probably easier for you to go in and choose to do a list from a range because they can get the list from that range pretty easily. And in this case, you type it in the actual sheet name and the, the range, or just click on this little grid and it will let you select your data range right here. So I'm gonna choose from this range of items. What's great is that you can even choose from items below that that have nothing in there and you can put in more things later if you needed to. So I'll hit save and now I can choose from these items. Right, John Doe, Daffy Duck. And what's great is that if, if I change this table to, let's say, Jasmine Doe, then this becomes a different choice for me now. 
Now, what happens when I want this to fill, auto fill in and this to auto fill in? Well, I use the VLOOKUP command. So VLOOKUP starts with equals, of course, because it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a function. I type in VLOOKUP and then I can click on this and it will kind of coach me along. So it says, what search key do you want to use? What do you want to look up? What value are you looking up? Well, I'm going to look up the value that is in this cell. So this is what I'm looking up, comma, the range that I'm going to reference that to look it up. And I will say, okay, I will range, uh, I will go here. I'll look on this table. And uh, then I'm going to, what index do I want to use? And the index in this case is the, the column number in the range that I want to return a value for. So this is going to look up Jasmine Doe and return the value in which column? Well, not one, but two. So the range would be two. So it looks up, it looks up Jasmine Doe on this thing and returns the value in the second column. And then is sorted is whether or not these are in alphabetical order. Uh, so it's false. They're, they're not. And for the most part, it's going to try to get the, the closest one. And what's great about this is that now if this changes, then it's going to look up John Doe. It's going to look up Daffy Duck. It's going to look up Pinkie Pie. And for this one, I'm going to do a basic formula in the same way, uh, only different references, of course. So in this case, I'll do VLOOKUP. I'm now looking up the same thing, Pinkie Pie. But the range is, you know, this, and the index is now number three, and it's false. It is not sorted by alphabet order. There we go. That's your VLOOKUP, and uh, you're going to find a lot of cases where you might want this to come up, and you might want to be able to reference this. The big thing, though, here is that often you don't want this to be sitting there on the same sheet as where you're actually working. So sometimes people will make sheets um, like called lookups or data or something like that. And they will go in here and paste these tables so that they can reference them there. So in this case, um, we would have to change our formula to reference that. And that's pretty easy to fix. You can come in here and say, OK, uh, our data here um, is going to be a VLOOKUP. And instead of E14 to E17, we are then going to go to data and look that up there and notice it forms it puts in the sheet name data exclamation mark that lets it know that that's the sheet a8 to c11 and uh and we can just copy this part of the formula and come in here and do it this way right now your validation might need to change as well and this is going to take us here to right here and now it's looking in the data table the data sheet to find that <clears throat> Yep, still works. Everything's great. Only this sheet is now clean, and this one holds all of our tables and lookups and all that kind of stuff. What's neat about this is that you can actually hide this sheet. If you pull down the little tab here, you can choose hide, and then it won't show up at all, but it still works. If you ever need to see it again, you just choose all sheets and select it. You'll notice it's kind of grayed out. All right, so let's see an example, uh, an advanced example of some of this in action. Now, <laughs> I'm warning you right now, I'm, I'm geeking out a little here. So this is a, uh, a template for a character sheet that automatically calculates a lot of stuff for a game, a role-playing game. This character sheet's meant to be printed eventually, but uh, online it, it's calculating all the values it needs. In this game, um, you receive a numerical bonus based on the value you have for different um, attributes. So if you have a strength, the scores go from about three to 18. Uh, you get you get a plus one bonus for every two points above 10. And so basically that's a, a formula that's calculating that. So if this were to change to an 18, that would become a plus four. This goes to 20, that goes to plus five. This goes to 13, it rounds, it goes to plus one. So um, notice that when I'm changing this, it changes here because it uses the same stuff. But what's kind of neat about this is if I change, if, if I select this and make this a dot, this becomes a plus five. What's going on there? Well, that's using the if uh, formula that we explored before. And it's also referencing a certain range. So this right here has been set up as a range name. So if I go over here to data and named ranges, you can set up an, a, a name for a range. So these cells here are known as STR mod, strength mod, strength modifier. So I can reference that in a formula by going strength mod plus if this one is greater than zero. That means it has something in it. Add their proficiency bonus, which is over here. It's another named range. Otherwise, don't add anything. And then add in X19, which is the miscellaneous field. So it basically says this will add in strength mod plus miscellaneous fields. Plus, if I put a dot or anything in here, it will also add whatever is 
there for the proficiency bonus. And this works for all these different skills. This is adding their dexterity mod because it's a dexterity skill, plus the proficiency mod times various things to determine whether or not they have um, a multiplier or something like that on it. Uh, it's kind of crazy just how complicated you can make this, but this is just using roughly the if-then statements and the named ranges uh, and stuff like that. So that's a pretty advanced example of a spreadsheet that kind of puts some of these skills together for you. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it useful, and if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. In fact, uh, why don't you go ahead and support us and hit that subscribe button or click on that little bell notification so you'll get updates. Leave a comment or an idea for a Tech Tuesday video below. Share this video with your friends, and we will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.